Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. From Fox News, Biden's spectacularly low approval rating makes re-election a virtually impossible, former Clinton pollster says. Voters see Biden's out-of-control spending as the reason for inflation, Penn said. He's a uh, older school uh, Democratic pollster. I remember him. We're going to also see a couple of short clips from CNN with poll numbers as well. But let's get into this first. Former Clinton advisor and pollster Mark Penn joined the story Thursday to analyze why President Biden is losing support in key demographic voting blocks. This is Mark Penn now. These are spectacularly low approval numbers. To really get down to it, only a, a third being favorable and in the 20s of independence, of course, makes Biden re-election a virtual impossibility. The administration has got to pivot or this is going to be a tornado of midterms if these numbers continue to hold up, which they will. And frankly, they've had month after month here to do something to turn around on inflation, on immigration, on Ukraine, on crime, and they just haven't done it. They have done small little incremental changes. They need big changes to change some big numbers, and they do. And let's just uh, do a short little. Now, you'll recognize him on the right. He's the he's Mark Penn. He's the old school Clinton pollster. And you even see Joe Manchin points blame at White House for soaring inflation. It's um, it's really crazy. It's uh, it's it's going all the Republicans way. It's there to theirs to lose. And you even see their MSNBC, RNC demands on presidential debate, and they were reasonable demands, reasonable. In other words, one of them was the debates are multiple days after early voting or mail-in voting. A lot of the states have early voting, mail-in voting, and we can go back and forth on that, but it is what it is. And the debate was, there was millions of votes cast before the debate. And the Republicans said, wait a minute, that's not fair. And it's not. And they wouldn't change it. So the Republicans just said, we're out, we're out of here. And nobody can really blame them. Now let's look at a couple of uh, couple of clips here from CNN considering polling. You know, you'll see here, polls, Biden hits new approval lows with 200 days until midterms. So that's a good uh, benchmark, 200 days. Uh, let's see what they have to say. Look at the charts there. And they're looking at net approval. What they do is they take the approval, the disapproval, subtract from one from the other, and that's how you get that number. Look at Bush in 2022. Of course, that was 9-11 plus 30. His father plus 22. Clinton plus 11. Trump plus 3 in 2018. Obama minus 8 in 2010. That was Romney's to lose in 2012, and he choked, just like Trump said. Reagan was even down. Of course, in 84, he turned it around. It was a landslide. Carter, of course, I remember distinctly. I got married in 79. I got high school in 74, and I remember that time. It was horrible. And Biden is even lower than Carter. So I'm sure Jimmy Carter appreciates that. But let's, let's just take a look at what this, uh, these two clips have, have to say concerning the poll numbers and approval. It's, um, it's pretty crazy. One of the things driving this, the economy, or economic concerns, I should say. Yeah, economic concerns. So, you know, look, we spoke about this earlier in the week, you know, if you look at jobs, the economy is doing pretty good. You're looking at See, the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index at this point in the presidency. And they go back, as you can see, till 78 in other, in other years as well, in April, which is the month we're in. And look at 2022, 66%. It's uh, not very good. As you can see, in April 2018 which was just prior to the midterms then, it was 99. Hmm, pretty high. Can't get higher than 99 because nobody ever gets 100. Let's listen on. Inflation, not so good. How do voters see it? How do Americans see it? This is the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index through this point of presidency. Look at that, just 66 in April of 2022, going back since 1978. It is tied for the lowest. It was 66 in April of 1982. Of course, that was a good year for Democrats. 
in the house. Even in April of 78, it was 82, which really, really was poor. And it's worse than that now by 16 points. House of Representatives with the Republican president. And I'll just note, if you don't believe that the economy is hurting the Democrats and Joe Biden, look, look at this. Look at the net approval. Trump, plus three, 2018. Those were the midterms where the Democrats got, did very well. Obama was minus eight. Even Reagan in 82 was minus 12. Look at Carter and Biden, 22 and 23 points negative. Trump in 2018 plus three, Biden negative 23. That's a 26 point swing. Rating that's approval minus disapproval. Joe Biden at this point, minus 23 points. That is the worst on record since they started asking about economic job approval ratings back in. That is the worst since they started asking about economic approval ratings. The worst. And they're going back till 1978. I'm not sure when they started these polls, but that's that's uh, almost two generations ago. 1978 with Jimmy Carter, who, of course, ended up the economy, ate his presidency and put it to bits. Arianne, thank you. Thank you, sir. There is now you're going to see another clip here. Biden hits new approval lows with 200 days. It's still the same headline, but this is going to be interesting what he says concerning this. Brand new polling out on the presidential approval rating, and it's not good for President Biden. Joining us now, Harriet and CNN senior data reporter. These numbers are really tough. You know, John, I don't like just looking at one poll. I like looking at multiple polls, and there were four different That's, polls. I, I go along with that. Multiple po- polls, you get a, a average... Some polls are skewed left, some are skewed right. It just depends on who it is. Normally, most polls are skewed a little bit dumb, if not a lot dumb. So you're probably looking at these numbers are probably worse than they really are. But at least he's getting a, uh, an average of all the polls. At least this week, uh, Quinnipiac, we had a uh, hard public opinion strategies poll. That's with NBC or CNBC, Ipsos Reuters, C- CBS News, YouGov. I want you to look. These numbers kind of differ. They range from the low 30s to the low 40s. Low 40s is not good either. But what's key is the lowest are tied for the low for the pollster. Lowest tier. Lowest tier. This is one point off the lowest. Lowest tier. And when you have three or four pollsters showing the lowest numbers for the president of the United States, that is indicative. Yes, he's right. We'll, we'll see these polls are skewed. They're skewed Democrat. But what he's saying is that they're the lowest or tied for the lowest for the pollsters they've ever had. So even if the numbers are skewed, all the numbers are going south for President Biden and the Democrats, which, which shows that there is movement. Now, these polls are probably worse for Biden because they're skewed Democrat. What he's trying to say is that even the ones that are skewed in Biden's favor are all at the lowest point or tied for the lowest for any pollster. And that shows a definite huge movement downward for the Democrats. Of a president who's in a lot of trouble, at least to where he has standed historically. Well, let's talk about history here. How does Joe Biden, President Biden, compare to former President Trump in this stage of the presidency? You know, there was always that. Now, there's the, there it is, the average job approval rating through this point in his presidency. Biden had 41 percent. Trump had 42. Now, I want you to think about something for a minute. 42 is pretty low for an incumbent president, i.e., in this case, Donald Trump. All of the social media, all of the social media monsters, 90% of the mainstream media was pounding on Trump relentlessly morning, noon, and night. Biden, even though he's starting to get a few tough questions asked now, is at 41 with almost all of the mainstream media all the social media monsters on his side. Everybody that that does news and information and how it's brought to the American people skew it to the Democrats in Biden's favor. And Biden is at 41, one point less than Trump, who was getting pounded relentlessly. Granted, sometimes he was his own worst enemy, and I'm still a Trump supporter. Look at that. He still is one point above Biden. 
That speaks volumes. Thing. Oh, Donald Trump has the lowest approval rating at this point in his presidency. We did it over and over and over and over again. Well, at this point in his presidency, Donald Trump's numbers actually his average approval rating is one point higher than Joe Biden's, which is at 41 percent. Donald Trump at 42 percent. A first term president at this point in his presidency. Uh, this is the lowest. This is the lowest for anyone who was elected to the presidency and didn't get up there through the vice presidency. This is a really, really, really bad number. Really, really, really bad number. And with all the help that he's getting and all the help that he did get in 2020 in the election and 2021 as the Democrats and the president were screwing up Riley, they got all the help in the world from the media social cable news and they're still one point below Donald Trump that speaks volumes so let's recap Biden's spectacularly low approval rating makes re-election virtual impossibility former Clinton pollster says two things going to go on here that I wish I knew answers for that I don't one is do the Democrats have anybody besides Kamala Harris to come up they can't get rid of her even though they want to I wouldn't give up the vice presidency if I was her. The chances of her being president are probably about 90%, assuming Biden does not make out the full term. But they're stuck. They have to keep with Biden until 2024, prop him up somehow, physically, mentally. I don't know how they're going to do it. It's like the old saying goes when the, you know a dog chases a car. Well, the Democrats caught the car. Now what do they do? They don't know. They've burned all their bridges to make sure that Donald Trump didn't win re-election. We can't go into detail here because this is YouTube, but they did everything they possibly could to just squeak by. And the Electoral College, Trump only lost by 20, 25,000 votes. So they're screwed over. And the other thing that's still up in the air is, will Trump run again? He has something to lose this time. He can always use the asterisk over the 2020 election saying that things happen that shouldn't have. I can't go into detail. And that's the way Trump thinks. So he can always say, listen, I won. I pulled the inside straight against Hillary Clinton. The Democrats did what they did. And I think this is what they did. And I can't say, of course, this is YouTube. And he'll always have that for the rest of his life. Or... They pick somebody else for the Republicans to run like I.E. DeSantis. I frankly would like to see this scenario. I think Trump has a good chance of winning in 2024. Does DeSantis have a better chance of winning in 2024? Maybe. Not sure. It's hard to predict. But I do know this, though. I think the country would be much better off and the Republican Party at the same time if Trump ran in 2024. And Ron DeSantis was the vice president. We would have four years of Trump. Of course, Ron DeSantis would run for president after being VP for four years. That goes without saying. And there's a lot of water under the bridge that would go on, but I think that's the best scenario. So we would have 12 years of America first presidents, i.e. Trump's second term, and then another eight years of Ron DeSantis. That is my that is my magical goal. If I could wave a magic wand and have that happen, that's what I would do. We'll see what Trump does. Sometimes I wonder if he's going to run again, and sometimes I think he is no matter what, and then sometimes I think maybe he's going to walk away because he's got too much to lose. I don't know. But we'll have to see. Sorry this video ran a little long, but I think this is important to look at and discuss. And like I said, for political junkies like me, this is just great stuff. Anyway, folks, we'll see what goes on. Midterms are 200 days away. Tick, tick, tick. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck.